it will turn out really good and uh, you all will be sending us emails saying you enjoyed it and you're gonna be making more of this. So with that, I'm gonna start. What I have here for cuckoo sabzi, which kind of looks like the herb frittata, we have the parsley chopped, uh, fresh cilantro chopped, chives chopped, one cup of fresh dill chopped, and you can, if you don't like certain veg, you know, every herbs here, you can use something else. If you don't like dill, you could use leek. It's a very, you know, versatile thing. And then we have four to five eggs. I'm gonna let you know what we're gonna do. Are we gonna use four or five? Uh, we have uh, one spoon of uh, purpose, all purpose flour, um, chopped walnut. Again, if you're allergic to chopped walnut, you can use uh, pine nuts or almonds. Um, then we have berberries. If you cannot find berberries or you don't like that tangy taste to it, you can replace that with cranberries. So uh, sorry, I, I, oh, and then the salt. So let me slow down. This is my first experience. So I just, maybe I went too fast. So first we have our herb. So I hope everybody that's cooking with me tonight already chopped their uh, herbs, the parsley, cilantro and chives and dill, okay? I hope you all did that. Next thing is please turn your oven to 385 because our recipe says 350. And when I cooked, uh, the center of our frittata was a little soft and kind of soggy. So we want to eliminate that. For that, we are raising the oven temperature to 385 and uh, make sure you have your vegetable chopped. Look in the bottom, we don't wanna have any water. If you have water in there, it's gonna be turning soggy. So um, now I'm going to dump all my vegetable here and then add my eggs. Okay, let's talk about the eggs. The eggs is, uh, we're gonna decide where I'm going to, I'm going to put four eggs right now. And when I'm mixturing this, if the mixture looks like pudding, then I would say we're okay. We don't need five eggs. Sometimes you need five eggs if their eggs are really tiny and uh, you need that mixture, as I said, the pudding mixture that would hold these vegetables together in the oven. So, Let's mix this really well. And I'm gonna add the berries and actually save you on for the last because it will look pretty when it's on top. There'll be some of that sitting on when it's baking. The salt, one, we have one teaspoon. Okay. I am such a good chef. I already know by my just pouring, I know it's one spoon. Um, so now let's mix this really good. So let's try to get this to be the texture of a pudding, hopefully yogurt, pudding, something like that. And I hope your oven is at 385. Oops. I guess this is... Harvey, I'm so sorry. Can I ask you a quick question? Sure. You said on the recipe four to five eggs. Yes. If you do four, is it less um, spongy or is it, what's, why, why would you want to do four versus five eggs instead? Only uh, if your eggs are real small. I mean, the, my eggs, you can see they're pretty big, very large. So right now I can see that this looks pretty good, you know, I mean, this texture is good. It's actually, you know, it's like a pudding, yogurt, that kind of a uh, texture. Yeah. Are you zooming? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Somebody asked, were the barberry soaked? Oh, barberry, yes, yes. Good question. The barberry, the barberry you buy from store, uh, it's dry. Gosh, I don't know how long it's been sitting in the market. So we need to put it. Uh, in the water and soak it. If you haven't done that, I'm sorry because that was a mention. Uh, just grab a hot water right now from your sink 
uh, or, or put in the microwave and then put your uh, berries in there for, you know, uh, 10 seconds to soften it up. If not, all, only difference it will be is it's going to be maybe a little chewier, but it'll be still okay. Um, it will plump up. These berries will plump up as they're sitting in this mixture, as you can see. But I just put mine in a water for a little bit and see how much they they didn't get bigger. They just got plump here. You see that? They're plump here. That I hope this helps uh, answering your question. So now this texture looks good. What I'm worried about, I have some, you know, liquid in the bottom. But you know, hopefully that will dry up when it goes in the oven. Even though I've, I've been very careful with my my vegetables, I dry, wash them, dry them, then I chop them. So now here comes the dish that I'm gonna pour this in. Very simple. You see all how easy it is. I'm using olive oil. I mean, I'm sorry, this is avocado. Same as olive, they're all good. We will oil up the bottom of the dish. And just to make sure it's even, use our common sense and do a little, use a napkin and just kind of make sure it's all here, taking, you know, all there. Okay, so you can even use butter, you know, just butter up the bottom. It's, it'll be good enough. All right, now it's the action. Let's pour this in to my dish here, this mixture. Wow, see I always make it in a circle on the stove. By the way, you could do this on a stove as well. Uh, it requires uh, maybe half a, uh, one fourth of a cup of oil. So this is like a healthier version of it, but it's a square now, it's okay. I see juice here, which I, last time I made it, I didn't see juice. I have no idea why is it's doing that, but, Hopefully it'll, it will hold itself up and it would turn out really yummy at the end. If not, this is so hard to make it, to cook while uh, everybody's on watching. Okay, so, all right, I'm going to put three berries on top of this just for, you know, same decoration. So when it's out of the oven, it's pretty red colored and the walnut with the old stone. The walnut, some walnut. Let's see if I be louder. Crush them. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to put this. Don't forget to put a foil and make few spaces, like pierce some holes on top because we need the heat to enter to this mixture. And I will put this in the oven. And I guess you can talk about uh, someone else. Tilly is taking over. This will go in the oven for 25 minutes. All right, uh, I think I think the camera is gonna go on to Tilly now, right? Are we off? Okay. Everyone. So this is our half seat. Sorry, my mom's moving the other device. There's an echo. Um, but it's Persian New Year on Saturday. So every year for Persian New Year, we put up the half scene. Um, half is the word for seven in Farsi. So there's seven S's is what it's called for the half scene. And they're each symbolic for something that's like a kind of like a positive affirmation for the new year. So I can kind of walk you through the main ones. Um, I'm presenting right now. Okay. Um, so here's the sabze, which is like rebirth. So it's growth. And then there's also the seke, which are coins, uh, which is kind of like represents a wealth. And have rose water, which is like, kind of like cleansing. Um, and then there's the Seville, which is the orange. And then we have the sieve, which is the apple. 
Um, and we also have this here, which is garlic, and that represents medicine. And then there's also the mirror, which you can see. And I'm gonna turn around my camera so you can kind of see it better. Here's like a tour of some of the different items. And there's the seven main ones, which we talked about. And then there's also additional items that we bring on. Um, and we do this every year for Prusa New Year. And we have a traditional meal. Usually we have kebab and we make Persian food and we get saffron ice cream from the Persian market. Um, we used to do Persian dancing. So that's like what we would do on Persian New Year as well. It's just kind of a day for family. Um, and people say Noruz Mubarak. That's like happy new year um, because the new year is called Noruz and it's basically like going into the springtime. Um, and yeah, that is basically it. Just before. So why, why is it no, why is it this particular time? Explain why it's Do you want to explain? Time. Yeah, so Noruz is the equinox. It's the, uh, it's the day that um, the uh, day and night are uh, exactly the same number of hours, minutes, and seconds. So as you, as you know, the uh, Earth rotates, and so 664 days, 364 days and six hours, whatever. So it, um, it shifts around about six hours, just under six hours every year. So it's, um, it's, it's the way that the Earth rotates that governs the, uh, the start of the new year. So the start of the year is the start of the first day of spring, as well as the first day of the, uh, the month of spring. The Persian, new, Persian months, coincide with astrological months. So if you're born on a particular, uh, if your, your sign is Libra, guess what? It's, that's the Persian month that, that matches exactly your sign. Um, did you talk about chart three? No. So the, the, the notice is, is uh, expands from the, a few days before the new year. Um, it's the last uh, Wednesday of the month where people celebrate and they jump over fire celebrations. And it goes on until the 13th day after the, um, after the uh, New Year, after Nuru's, and that's the day uh, people go out uh, to a picnic. So the tradition is to go out on a picnic. Um, it's celebrated in, uh, it's, it's called Persian New Year because you know some Persians here, but it's really not just Persian. It's, uh, it's celebrated uh, uh, so roughly uh, southeast of Europe, all the way out to India. Uh, around uh, 13, 14 countries have uh, they uh, have official holidays um, across uh, that region, so, uh, and then, uh, however, it's celebrated in many more countries than the ones that have official holidays. Uh, in, in in Iran, they have uh, official holidays for schools for two weeks, uh, and uh, businesses, well, government uh, businesses for about five days, and that probably gives you. Uh, Kind of an overview. Yeah, normally we would have our family or over for Noru's, but obviously not this year because of COVID. Um, but we're still, you know, having Persian food and, and having a good time. We put up the half scene and everything. So, um, oh yeah, and also on Noru's, it's kind of like Christmas because there's there's presents and traditionally um, people parents will give their children with clothes or money. Those are like the two most popular things um, to give. Yeah, and also you go visit, the tradition is that you go visit a family member and uh, there's a hierarchy. So the <laughs> older you are, <laughs> you are the, at, the, at the higher end of the, um, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the hierarchy. So the younger people go visit the older people and then they go to the et cetera, it goes on and on. And, and then, the, then the tradition is that then you have to go back for a return visit. So this goes on for two weeks. It's, uh, <laughs> It's, it's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's about it. Yeah. What else can we talk about? Can you show the table? Dilly, can we please see your table one more time with a slow panning shot? Thank oh. you. Really slow so we can see everything. Wow, you have beautiful labels on there. Can you point them out again slowly? Yeah. So close sure. to the label so they can yeah. see it. So here's the senged, which is the senged, which is dried berries. And there's the somak, which is an Iranian spice. We usually kind of have that on a lot of Iranian food. 
Here is the sear, which is the garlic, kind of symbolizes good health and medicine. The cerque, which is the vinegar, age and patience. The coins, which we talked about. And then we have the mirror, reflections, ancient Persian beliefs. Poems. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Here are poems, Baba, do you wanna? No, it's okay. It's yeah. <laughs> um, and then we have some Persian cookies there. Um, and then usually, typically they would have a goldfish. We usually do, but we didn't get around to buying one this year. Um, that kind of like symbolizes life and the end of the last then year. You, and then you see you have a candle. And then one, one for, we have three children. So they got three candles for our Great children. One of them is at college, so she's not here. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then there's uh, Hyson in, in Farsi, Sombol, so it's another S. And it's cool because a lot of the Persian markets in the South Bay sell a lot of these items around Noru. So, like, we went to the Persian market last week and we bought some of this stuff because they know that Noru is coming. So, um, it's really cool how the community kind of knows what's going on. Um, I think that's it. Oh, any questions? Any questions? Why is the orange so in the water? In the chat. Do you know, Bob? The orange in the water. Oh. It says on the card there. Yeah. It's uh, floating in space. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, can I answer that question? Go yes. ahead. What I have heard is the reason why the apple or the orange is in water is because during the shift at the vernal equinox, there's supposed to be like a shift in the earth and the water is supposed to be able to represent that shift. At least that's what I've heard. I could be oh, wrong. Yeah. That makes a lot it of makes, sense. Makes sense to me. And I'll there's another question that says vinegar is for, it's for age and patience. Thank you. Of course. What kind of gifts are traditional? Socks, clothes, money. <laughs> Spring outfits. Spring outfits. A big kiss. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys go to the picnic on the 13th day? Uh, we, uh, we sometimes do. <laughs> Depends on the year. <laughs> They go by high range, they'll do a lot of them. Tell them about the uh, the what you do for the 13th. Um, oh, you throw, you throw, you throw it, in the... it in the stream on the 13th day. You take the sabze, which is like this green grass, and we throw it in the stream next to our house. Um, why do we do that? I don't know. It's uh, uh, uh it's tradition. I can, I can uh, um, maybe add something to it. It's uh, the reason we add, we throw it in the street, actually in the stream in Iran, going out of town after the 13 day, is because um, we, we take things from the earth, mother earth, which we grew this greens. And after the 13 day, with everything we went through, bad, if we had bad health or anything, or we brought the spring into our home and nature to our home, then we'll give it back. It's like a closure to start to start the day of 14, which is going back to school and the kids don't want to go back, but it's basically, it's a closure. We take it back and throw it in the spring, give it back to mother nature and a lot of, I guess, birds and things are going to eat it. But also Mr. Safavian knows uh, the, there is this myth. I mean, it's not a myth. I think it's a tradition. We also tie a knot on that. Uh, <laughs> because what it is in Iran, uh, there wasn't much networking for boys and girls to, you know, know who's single, who's not. And only girls that they weren't married, they make a wish and they're the one to walk to the stream and throw this in the water. So everybody knows, aha, uh -huh, there is a girl available. And usually 13, 14 year olds don't even want to do it, the girls. But when they're like 17, 18, they kind of, they think it's, cute and funny and they do it so that's kind of giveaway so it's all these fun things they add to it but originally it was like we bring the spring into our home because winter in Iran so hard and cold and snowy and nothing there's nothing green or red and then 
we have it and then we give it back to mother nature so we give it away so that's that's one concept my mom told me i don't know <laughs> maybe she made it up but it sounded good as well as your your uh, reasons as well so thank you Sounds good. And there was also a question in the chat about the type of food that we eat at the picnic. I don't really know about the picnic, but for, for a normal person New Year meal, we have an array of Persian food like maskiar, which is kind of a yogurt and cucumber um, like combination that we have with a lot of our meals. And then kebab. Um, Fish. What else? Oh, fish. Fish, fish, fish. is, yeah, traditional oh, it's like fish, it. white fish, and also uh, uh, rice with uh, herbs mixed in with it, sabzi polo. And, uh, and then the ash, oh, ashresh there. Yeah. Which is a stew. And we also <clears> have <throat> like tadig rice, which is kind of like has a hard crust on the top, and all the kids fight over the crust <laughs> because it's the best part. Um, yeah, that's. Usually yeah. our meals. A lot of eating. A lot of eating. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone on this call know about uh, like Father Noruz or Baba Noruz or, or you know that sort of thing? Can anyone explain who he is? Yeah, I don't know if we can explain, but we used to uh, at the Noruz Bazaar at Rich Chris Intermediate, which usually happens every year, not this year, but they would have a Father Noruz, which is kind of like a Santa-like <laughs> character, kind of, that brings presents. So they would have someone dress up as Father Noruz. So that's kind of like our experience with him. And then there's also a couple Persian cartoons that we used to watch that would have Father Noruz as a character. Maybe you know more about the actual folklore of it, Baba, I don't and, know. Uh, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Does anyone else know? That's mm, I I don't know if I have. I know a little bit is um, because uh, nature again. Mother Nature is a like the grandma, like a Mrs. Santa Claus, and then um, the the winter is uh, the the whole the system of the uh, from the first month to the twelfth month is where the spirit of um, this. Um, New Year is that is getting old, you know, by the time it's the last month of the year. He's the, 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 the man, but he, every year he doesn't die. He, he's reborn, reincarnated, And so the old lady sits uh, by the half scene and uh, she's waiting to get a kiss from this uh, uh, Baba Nowruz. Baba Nowruz is coming and, and he, he's all old by now. In the winter, he's all has white beard and hair and everything. He's, he's old. He comes by and he knows he has a mission. He has to reincarnate to spring again and leave. So he, he makes plan to come as late as possible so she's asleep. So poor <laughs> Mrs. Nowruz is uh, falling asleep. And that's when uh, she, he comes and he steps over, he jumps over the, the equinox, the 365 days and the, the, the whole year, uh, rota the earth rotates around the sun. And there it is, we step into new year and this whole new year starts, it's a young man start the spring and is gone and she misses him again. So this is the, <laughs> Uh, Baba Noruz or the Father Noruz, uh, that's what we were told. And the 12 seasons where the, the sons or something like that from the, the son of this, uh, these two, I don't know if they were, they had kids or I don't know, these are their kids. But anyway, that was part of it as well. Um, it's all from maybe 3000 years ago when um, Zoroastrian had these uh, different system of thinking and they believed in the gods of fire and water and earth and that uh, they most of these symbols they're all from the, the the have seen the elements are the symbols of what they brought in for all of us all right I'm sorry I interjected here <laughs> 
Thank you so much, Parvin. And thank you, Tilly. Uh, Tilly's uh, a senior at Penn and she's joined by Omid here tonight. So thank you both for sharing um, and sharing your, your traditions. We have um, a couple of other people that wanted to share. Uh, Nina, are you um, ready? There? Thank you so much, the Fabian family. We really appreciate it. I think everybody covered a lot of it. I don't know what else to really add. I think for our family, one thing that's a little unique is for the kids when they get um, the AD money, the, the money that is a gift for the children, um, when they wanna get their gift, get the money, um, we have a tradition in our family where we basically have them do a little dance performance for us first. So we turn on mm -hmm. the music loud and um, they, do their dance and sometimes they even dress up um, and they'll dance around and then we each of us in the family give them something and the oldest usually gets more than the youngest but that's the way it goes you have to earn your way up <laughs> but um do you have anything sophia that we do specifically in our family for Nara? Mm -hmm. well we say to everyone which yeah. Yeah. It's a time of reconnection also. Um, people you haven't talked to in a long time, you reconnect with, um, give them a call, wish them, you know, a happy new year, and then um, just see how they've been. So it's a time of reconnection with all kinds of not only relatives, but also friends. Um, I think back in Iran, it was more, you know, you would walk around or go visit actually people's homes, but here in the U.S., it's more about calling people as much as possible because everyone's so spread out. But we usually, we do go to the picnics usually, um, and the ones we tend to go to are usually in Orange County or West L.A., sometimes even Ventura County, um, tend to be the bigger parks with a lot more Persians. You'll, at that, if you go the 13th day after Noruz on a regular year, not a COVID year, you'll see just the whole all the green spaces taken up by picnic blankets and yummy Persian food filling the, the aroma in the air. It's a lot of fun. Nina, what is your favorite dish for Naruz? My favorite dish, I really like Ashurashte, which is kind of like a noodle soup. Um, beans and noodles in it, and it's really yummy. I, 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 they put a little bit of whey on it, and um, that's really good. I always love all the different types of yogurt dishes. There's, um, which we call must for yogurt. Tilly mentioned the uh, mustachiar, which is like very similar to a tzatziki sauce. I think is how they say it. The tzatziki sauce. It's basically like um, cucumbers with yogurt. Um, and then there's a yogurt that has um, shallots in it called mustamusir, which is really good with different kinds of kebab, with, whether it's beef or chicken or lamb. And there's must with spinach. And I actually made some this evening. It has spinach, garlic, onions uh, roasted in there, some crushed toasted walnuts, um, dried mint, sizzled dried mint and mixed up. So it's always a nice side dish to have with anything. Uh, the ash, the stew I mentioned, or the um, anything at all, kebab, bread, whether you have lavash bread or nuna sangak bread, which is really crunchy. It's like almost like cracker. Um, there's tons of, I love all kinds of Persian food, so it's really hard to pick one. But in regards to Noru's, um, the traditional foods, like all of it is. The white fish can be cooked really good. Yeah, Sophia likes the white fish a lot. That's tradition. For Noru's, it's white fish and herbed rice. Mm -hmm. And then from that point on, it's all kinds of good stuff. There's a lot of Persian restaurants around our neighborhood. So I recommend everyone on this demonstration tonight to check some out. There's so many different kinds of foods to try. There's a question about what kind of white fish. Um, sometimes it's a uh, trout. Sometimes it's um, uh, like a smoked trout. Sometimes it's, um, 
what other kinds of white fish does what kinds do you guys have anyone else on the call we usually do the trout and um, the smoked trout and the regular unsmoked trout so that's how it's been in iran there is a special uh very uh gourmet fish called Qizilala. they use that but I, I haven't even seen that fish here in us yeah you can have um, um lake michigan white fish which is, oh. which is pretty darn good yeah yeah we also use this uh this is linda's uh, favorite uh, new cookbook that's uh, that's pretty darn good it's very easy to follow um if, yeah, if you like Persian food and you want to try cooking on your own, the uh, this is a great book, really great book. It's kind of a little more modern than typical Persian cookbooks. It's What's called, it called? It's called June by, uh, can you say the name? Najime uh, <laughs> Batmanbolic. You might want to put that in the chat so people can see the spelling. <laughs> It's, it's a great book, um, very, very simple ways. Um, because a lot of the Persian recipes that I've tried take about four hours to make. And <laughs> this one is much better for me. But she's, she's, a, she's actually an excellent chef. She's got another book out, which is more expansive. And then she has a, a book with the, um, with the owner of the, the Darius winery in Napa. Mm -hmm. They did a joint book together and they it's a wine pairing, wine pairing book. So it, it pairs a, a different kind of wine with a different kind of dish. So that's that's an interesting book as well. So she's she's pretty active, and and the, the book is easy to follow. It's not like uh, traditional Persian cookbooks are. You take some of this and some of that, and you wait for some time, and then it's done. <laughs> but this one is, is actually exact. It says wait for thirty minutes, and then it's done. It's done. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Persian cooking is very involved, very time consuming. So if you found a cookbook that is a little more simplified and a little bit more exact, I highly recommend that then. That's a lot easier. Or get takeout because Persian <laughs> is really good when somebody else makes it. <laughs> um, I just wanted to add something here. I checked on my cuckoo in the oven and as I thought, 25 minutes is not enough. So I think I'm gonna add 10 more minutes. The, the, the top and the sides are still not doing well. So the bottom looks like it's, fit, it's, uh, it's fairly cooked. So anyone that's cooking with me, please, uh, if you're using oven, please add on 10 more minutes. And uh, that's just, sorry to uh, give you this little interjection here. All right. Thank you, Parvin. Can you now move to your uh, half scene tables and share? Because you have a beautiful table set up. Thank you. I usually, uh, let's see, where am I here? Oh, there. This is my table. Just to tell you, honestly, I don't set a table like this for my kids. This is a lot of work. I did this for all the kids that they're watching tonight. Oh, that's beautiful. Um, but usually I do a very modest uh, half scene. So I'm gonna start with the, the mirror, which is uh, basically it's a symbol of purity and clear, clarity, clear. Um, then we have the goldfish, which I don't, every time I bought goldfish, then they passed away and everybody would be crying. My kids would be crying. So we stopped doing that. So we just use plastic. We have water, which is a element of, again, health. And those days, water was uh, not, a, not clean and pure. And so having a wishing for having a good water was always an omen and everybody wished for. We have uh, the book of Hafez, which is this uh, poet is, um, has a lot of book, uh, poems that he's written and it's amazing how you can make a wish and read one of his poems and it literally guides you to if you should be continuing making this wish or not. So 
we in my family we don't use uh, Quran. We have used this for many years, and so we have this. And since money and AD has joined this celebration, which is kind of fairly new after um, after the attack of uh, uh, Arabs to Iran, the money and coins came in to was added to the half seen. So we usually put money here, right? And then give it to our kids. And like Omid said, starting from kids, they they get the less money and then the older they get will be more. And this money is pure clean. It came from a bank, nobody touched it. It's just crispy brand new money. So since I don't have that, I didn't. It's just for now, it's like that. Um, I do have this little grandma what it is, this little tiny craft my mom taught me to do. She sees a garbanzo beans and I just cut up a piece of cloth and hang her on her and she looks like a grandma because grandmas in Iran and Russia, uh, they would always wear a scarf to keep their ears warm. It wasn't because they have to wear burqa or, or hijab, they were just, um, they just grandmas do that. <laughs> and so my mom would help me make these and we would put these everywhere. You see on my sabze that I grew, they're sitting there, they're all over my setup here. And she would always say, these are the grandmas that you didn't see, they're visiting, they're saying hello. And so we, she would get carried away with all these crafts and stuff, it was really cute. Um, then I have um, the orange in the water, which is again, it's for a uh, universe. And when the uh, equinox happens and the earth um, turns, uh, rotates around the sun, I don't know, I've never seen it, but it's supposed to do a little shake or move or something in the water. Then we have my eggs here. You can do all kinds of different setup. Uh, it could be sparkling things, or you could have even faces of uh, Baba Noruz and Mrs. Noruz, and you could do that. So I, this year I thought I'd do a little bit of shiny things. Then we have the apple. So here is my seven. Apple is seed one, sirke bean vinegar two, senjed three, sear four, um, samanu five, som somag six, and sabze is seven. These are, if you really think about all these come from earth, mother earth. Vinegar is, um, come from grapes and grapes come from, you know, ground. Uh, Sinjit is a, um, is a special kind of olive that is treated and dried up. And again, so that's come from the, um, the you know, mother nature. And again, it's long life eating things related with olives. Garlic is for health. Samanu is taking wheat, growing, taking the stem of the wheat and adding sugar to it and letting it um, um, smear, uh, steer all, all day. I mean, I think it takes all day to make this very difficult uh, pudding to make. And it's filled with uh, vitamins because imagine taking the wheat that as it is sprouted and you know, cooking it with a little bit of sugar all day. The juice is just incredibly, uh, incredibly nutritious. And then somak is, um, what it is, it's kind of a healing. It's a spice we use on uh, kebab. Also, it's a beautiful plant when it's growing. It has it's different shades of sunshine. And so it just makes you happy to even look at it to grow. And so this is basically, what my half sin is. And uh, like I was telling, it brought back a lot of memories because my kids are older and they don't even have patience to sit down and make the grandmas with me. But uh, for me, it brought back a lot of memories that um, uh, they were just so cute to, to make these, to have the precious time with uh, my mom and the quality to spend to, uh, I was excited to make these things and, um, uh, of course, we were excited to eat the cookies, but these were the, making the craft was also another thing. And then also marzipan, uh, it's one of the traditional cookies that we have.
for the um, this uh, event. Uh, I think my oven is, you know, beeping. Uh, so anybody has a question? Hello? Should we check our cuckoos yeah. now to see if they're ready? Yeah, I think so. Because yeah, I thought I lost you guys. Um, I'm gonna, my oven is beeping. Let me check. I might have to. Ours, ours is done. We're eating already. Oh my goodness. How, how many minutes did you put your, did you do 385? Yeah, I think our oven is very efficient. <laughs> Mine is still not doing that. I can't believe it. This is a really fairly new, unless 10 years is not good. <laughs> it's not mine on top of my, um, okay. So let me see. I want someone to show me theirs to see how it looks like. <laughs> okay, I, I have to add some extra minutes for mine. So anybody has made their cuckoo you want to show me? Okay. <laughs> I don't think you can yeah. see it. It's hard to see. Oh, but... that looks good. Yummy. That looks really good. Okay. I think our pan, our pan was too big, so it's very thin. That's why it cooked faster. Oh, did you do it on the stove? No, but we did it in a, um, an oven-proof fry pan. Oh, okay. All right. Well, it's, it's getting there. Mine is the bottom looks perfect. The top is uh, a little soggy. And so I think 10 minutes. So anybody has a question? Actually, I was really surprised since this is, this started as a diversity class. Uh, I mean, the diversity um, 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 uh, program. And it was amazing for me since I haven't been in Iran for so many years to do a little research. And like Omid was saying, all the Eastern Europe, and I mean, I was looking at list Israel and China and uh, Afghanistan, they're Russia, all people, these people all celebrate Persian New Year. So it's kind of amazing that they all kind of have a unity, you know, they all celebrate and they're good about it. They're friends about it and they celebrate it, which was really fascinating and one thing i was confused is that the the year because um they now they go by this islamic year so it should be like the new year on saturday at 2 a.m in the morning it would be oh that looks great who is that you're hired who made that <laughs> it's me <laughs> <That's> lori <laughs> lori you're hired you're such a good cook See, I didn't want to say it, but I don't make these things. I just go to Seaside and buy them, but I, I wanted, I want it here, so I have to do it now. But let me see, I'm still, yeah, mine is not ready. The top is still kind of, I have no idea why it's turning like this. It's kind of uh, mushy, so. I it's like spring. I got mine yeah. done too, Parveen, but it's not, um, I have a lot of Zedesh in mine. Oh, okay. That looks well, still. So I only good. use four eggs. Okay. I, I use four. I only use four eggs too, and it got kind of eggy looking, but you know. If it's too eggy, can you show us your snarsis? Yeah, can you see it, Lori? Where is it? See. Here. Oh, oh wow. Oh, can you show it again, Narcissus? Here, can you see that? Nice. Look at oh, that. Oh, I like that. That's pretty wow. good. Wow. Thank you. I, I love I, that. What I did That's is I added the extra barberries on top, like you told us to. Uh huh. Yeah. That's oh, very nice. Very okay. Good. Anybody I'm else have a you. cuckoo ready? Okay. I'm going to show you mine, but this is not what I really like. I give it a C. Do you see that? Do you see my dish here? I liked, uh, Lori gets an A, and uh, let me, <laughs> I'm gonna put a piece, a corner of it that I think, because I don't know we're running out of time or what, but I'm gonna put a piece in, I hope you're not getting dizzy, I'm moving the, the screen. <laughs> I will put, oh no, yeah, see that? You see this? This is not done, look at that. Uh, it's the bottom looks perfect. It's like, it's coming out like a cake. That's the way it should be. The top is not cooked. 
But now you all get an idea. This is what it should look like. Lori's get an A because hers was perfectly shaped. Mine needs to go back almost like 20 more minutes in the oven. And then after it's out like Lori's, this is the dish I have. I put tomatoes, pickles, and some of these bread, like lavash, and serve it. Of course, for Persian New Year, we will add on herb rice and fish. So um, we, did, we didn't make that, and the Persian New Year is on Saturday, so we'll make sure and get those things. But here is my cuckoo going back in the oven. <laughs> oh gosh if i would have made it on the stove it would be ready by now because i did that already and it worked so okay anything okay so we want to take a picture so if you don't want to be in our picture can you turn your camera off but everyone else show us your cuckoo and mana can you return it back to the gallery view and Sangeeta will take a photograph. I don't have one to show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I'm really hungry now. <laughs> you can come over my house. Uh, just uh, don't tell anybody if you don't wear your mask. Oh, God, I, say I, <laughs> I can't get over how much it looks like spring and it looks like the beautiful grass on the table. <laughs> Very Thank pretty for the Compliment. Are we doing a gallery view, Lori? Are we doing yes. a gallery Lana, view? Lana, can you switch the camera to gallery? And then we'll take a picture of I removed all the of the spotlights. So I think, Gita, you can uh, do the gallery view on yours and it should show everybody. I'm sorry, Lana, what did you say? Oh, I see it, yeah. I, I removed the speaker. Oh, maybe somebody else can take it. I'm on a phone, maybe I can't see it. I only see you, Lana. I got it. Okay, perfect. Just double uh, Lori's cuckoo for me and put my oh, name Beth in. Oh, Beth looks nice. <laughs> Lana, Narcissus, Nina. Let me see Beth. Judy. I can't see any of it. Where are oh. How do you see all that? I only see Lori. I switched to gallery view. Oh, gallery. So now we can is... see everybody. Go in the top right, Carbon, and hit view, and then you can hit gallery view, and you'll be able to see everybody. Okay, let's see. I okay, don't... so I'm going to count down from three to one. So if you're ready for a photo, three, two, one. And one more time. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Nice work. Parvin, thank you yes. so much for a fabulous job. You're welcome. Thank, thank you, you so much for we this. We have and... this, uh, hold on just a second to thank you. We have this little succulent plant that oh, um, thank you I so much. put together from cuttings from my yard, but the ceramic pot was made by a local potter named Gus Sampras. Oh, so that's I'll beautiful. deliver this to you. And we also have one for Omid thank and you. Linda. And I'll deliver those later mm -hmm. this week. Thank you everybody for participating oh. today. I hope you enjoyed Feels it. Every Happy New Year. Great. Thank you. Anybody Thank have you any last so questions? Happy New Year. Happy Thank New you so Year. Much, Thank you. And <laughs> Thank you, Parvin. Thank you. Thank you guys. Have Thank a good day. Uh, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. It's Going great to celebrate New Year again. <laughs> yes. Happy New Year. 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 Thank you. <laughs> yes, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>